Ladies and gentlemen, we are back here live at the Prince of Investment, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado, via Honolulu, Hawaii. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and make sure you hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. But ladies and gentlemen, as you guys and girls can see, the topic we have today, many people hear about it all the time. You know, it's that dreadful topic of retirement, retirement income. How can we retire? Will Social Security be there? I get phone calls all the time, emails inquiring about, hey, my dad is looking to retire, my mom is looking to retire. They don't know if they can retire. In this episode, we're going to talk about different retirement income strategies so yourself, as we age and get a little bit older, people are looking to exit the workforce. Even if you're an entrepreneur, you still one day are looking to exit the workforce. But today we have a very special guest, as you guys and girls can see, from D Square Financial Group, we have Mr. Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Johnson has been in the financial industry for a good time here. He's joining us here from Tennessee. I don't want to butch the name. I know he's, I know it's outside of Knoxville, but it's, uh, what is it, uh, Oak Ridge, Tennessee? Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge, Tennessee. There we go. Oak Ridge, Tennessee is in the building today, so, you know, let's give him a little round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Demetrius, thank you for tuning in today. Um, when we talk, well, first of all, tell people a little bit about yourself. Um, I didn't really get to go too much into you about your your long history into the financial industry. Then we'll jump into some other other topics that people want to hear. Yeah, you know, I've I've kind of run the gambit of the financial services industry. I started out. Um, I'm 45 years old, just turned 45 just this year, and I started out in the industry back right out of high school. I took a very non traditional route to financial services. Got my securities licenses at a very early age. Um, you know, got Series 6 and Series 7 and Series 63 and all these investment licenses, um, you know, in my 19, you know, my late teens and early 20s. And so I learned a lot about um, mutual fund trading and stocks and what have you. I've had the opportunity to work at a number of Fortune 500 companies. And most recently, I've helped uh, with the state treasurer with um, a program that just launched this year, the Colorado Secured Savings Program. And so um, the entirety of my uh, career, my working years, uh, has been in financial services in one capacity or another. And so, um, you know, with that, I've launched D Squared Financial Group, and I've attempted to take a little bit from all of the companies that I've worked for and roll them into um, a product or a level of service that I can offer to the people who I feel like need it the most, which is the middle class families and small business owners. So that's really my target group right now is dealing with those guys. So, you know, what kind of brought about D Square Financial Group as a company? So that's really what I'm doing here in Tennessee is attempting to help underserved communities by providing them with the same level of service and financial planning skills um, that wealthy folks um, have had access to. So that's really, you know, my mission and kind of my goal is to help people to, you know, relieve themselves of what I kind of perceive to be something of a, a predatory financial system, it can be. And so there's different ways that you can set yourself up for retirement. And as you know, uh, Prince, there's investments, um, there's life insurance, um, there's real estate. Um, there's a number of different ways that you can put your money to work for you. I so happen to have decided to spend uh, the second half of my career focusing on the life insurance portion of, um, you know, creating generational wealth and creating, um, you know, retirement income strategies. So, um, you know, I've used the latest technology uh, to help use a logic-based approach to helping people to accumulate wealth and to uh, hopefully transfer and create generational wealth for others. Okay. Now I want to ask you this question here. You was on the Colorado, uh, you was on the board with um, the, the Colorado State Treasurer, Mr. Yes. Dan Young. You talked about yes. the Colorado Savings Program. Yeah. What was that about? And yeah. people, what was, you know, I know we talked about this offline and you know, uh, Dave Young has came onto the podcast and spoke about it yeah. a little bit as well. So I would tell us about it, you know, and congratulations yeah. and big kudos for doing that. Definitely, you know, big respect for that. Yeah, that Colorado Secure Savings Program, I'm very proud to have been a part of that. It's, you know, somewhat of a capstone of my career in that I was able to be a part of something that is slated to create um, a 10 to $15 billion impact to the state of Colorado. And it's by doing um, something very um 
you know, inexpensive, something that is very logic based and just offering um, something uh, to small business employees um, that was previously not available to them readily. So, you know, the secure savings program is something that is similar to what has been rolled out in states like California and Illinois and other places. And I was on the board to help determine the feasibility and do the research um, for the plan. And so the governor took our recommendation to implement it. Um, Dave Young, the treasurer, was on the, uh, the chair of that board. And the implementation has started here in, in 2023. And so small business owners will um, help to facilitate access to traditional and Roth IRAs to their employees. So these are small business employees um, that are normally between, you know, maybe five and 50 employees. And so we have found that historically, when it comes to having access to retirement plans like a 401k plan, most small business owners, um, it's cost prohibitive for them to do that. And so by offering something that is already available, which is a traditional IRA or a Roth, by simply creating a portal for these small business employers to offer this to their employees will encourage them to invest. And, you know, we found out that, you know, it's more likely that if you set up a plan like this on an auto enrollment type of way, that people will be more likely to stay with the plan. So this Colorado Secure Savings Program, if you work for a small business, and that small business is part of your onboarding and your enrollment says, hey, you know, we're participating in the um, Colorado Secure Savings Program. They're able to make contributions to a Roth or a traditional IRA. And if they leave that employer, they're part of the gig economy. A lot of the Gen Xers and the Gen Z people, they'll hop from job to job. It's a portable plan that they can, um, you know, take with them. And so they can, you know, make maximum contributions to their Roth or their traditional IRA and um, have access to that. And they're auto enrolled into it. And so um, we found that people are 15 times more likely to stay enrolled in a plan if they are auto enrolled in it. So if we begin with the assumption that everybody wants the plan for retirement, um, you know, that's what kind of drove that auto enrollment um, functionality. So they can elect out of it if they want to, but it's just assumed that um, you do want to participate and make some contribution to uh, your retirement. Now, um, who's managing this? I'm a small business. I have employees. I'm like, okay, that sounds like a good idea. Where do I go? How do I sign up? Who manages this? I, is it an independent manager? Is it government manage? How does that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the state is helping to uh, facilitate and absorb any of the costs that may be incurred by um, small business owners, so far as any type of administration of the of the plan, um, you know, or any any of that is being absorbed by the state. This is gonna be cost neutral to the state, the way that we've set this up. Um, we have hired, um, you know, money managers um, that will be uh, managing the, the funds that will be offered within the plan. And, um, you know, like I said, the, the cost for the state is neutral over the period of time. Um, you know, like I said, 10 to 15 years, the state of Colorado will see between a 10 to $15 billion savings. Um, and that comes by way of having people more properly prepared for retirement and less dependent upon um, government programs. And so this program is more about providing access um, to something that you know people may not be aware is, is available to them. Because the fact of the matter is most time when people invest, their first experience with investing is with their 401k plan. It's with something that is offered through their employer. And then they go on and, and learn more about investing and do other things potentially. And so, but if you work in the gig economy, you worked for Uber or you work for, you know, this, this small business or that small business, um, they may not offer a 401k plan, but we still want to make sure that they have a, a clear portal and a clear way to have access and, and, and put it in front of them. Okay. Now, when someone goes in, they're a small business. Is, is the small business owner 
are they required to offer this? Yes. So by state law, if you're a small business and you have between five to 50 employees, you must offer your employees a, five, a 401k plan. And not a 401k plan. It's I'm not sorry, a 401k but the, plan. A, the security the, you, plan. Yes. So yes. So you must, you're not offering them a retirement plan. What you're doing as a small business owner is that you're helping to be kind of a, a you're helping to offer the secure savings program to your employees so that they have to offer it to them. The, em the employees can opt out of it if they want to, um, but it's something that they have to offer to the employees. So, but it, that, it's mandated that they offer it to their employees. Okay, so, so they don't have to do any match or anything like that. They just have to no. say, hey, when you hire no. someone, you must at least offer them this saving plan. And inside mm -hmm. that savings plan, is it just like a traditional Roth yep. 401k type plan where you have indexes, things like that? Yeah, it's, it's just like a, um, you know, like a, it's a normal Roth IRA account that they can open or a traditional IRA account. And they can actually use this account to roll over 401k assets from previous employers. So if they've got a whole bunch of 401ks kind of lingering out there from old employers, um, they can just roll it into, you know, a traditional IRA um, and, you know, do other things with it, pool it all together um, and have those assets work for them um, and, and use it part of, as part of a plan because you don't want to have your retirement assets kind of lingering out there. You know, you talk to Dave Young and he also is in charge of another aspect of the treasury is that unclaimed property. And so, um, <laughs> and so you don't want to have your 401k assets out there just lingering. And so uh, the Secure Savings Program is a great vehicle uh, to roll over assets into as well. Now, that's the most, um, you know, one of the more recent things that I've been focusing on. Um, and there's another component that I'm looking to, um, to mm -hmm. add to that program potentially. And, um, you know, being on uh, this podcast, you guys are kind of the fir first ones that will be aware of this. Um, okay. But, you know, there is um, a, a system that my firm has set up um, and it revolves around another portion of retirement income. And that has to do with, you know, everybody talks about investing, but life insurance is also something that can be used to help um, create retirement income. And that can come in the form of, you know, permanent policies, whether that's um, whole life or, or index universal life. Um, and, you know, there's always conversations out there, it seems like, you know, as to whether you should have investments or whether you should have life insurance. Well, the answer is you should have both, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when you have proper coordination of your um, assets, whether that's your investment assets, your real estate assets, your life insurance, um, and others. Um, and I throw life insurance in there as an asset because um, whole life and universal life, the cash value that is accumulated within those policies, while not an investment in and of themselves, is an asset and is part of an asset class. And it's part of a guaranteed asset class. Okay. And so, and the reason that it's called a guaranteed asset class is because the cash value within life insurance is not subject to loss, okay? And so there are, there are dividends um, that are paid on both index universal life that and is, on whole Is on this gonna be life. something like a IUL, a index yeah, so, universal life policy? Yeah, so there are IULs, which are index universal life policies, which track various indices. And then there's also whole life. And so whole life is a dividend-based growth, whereas index universal life is index-based growth within a life insurance policy. And so both of these tools can be used, especially in a high interest rate environment, which we are currently in, to help rapidly accumulate wealth um, and not be subject to any of the risk of the market. And so, again, the question is not whether you should have investments or life insurance. The question is, you know, how do you properly coordinate the two together to generate the best outcome, is, is my opinion, of, of, with those two things. And so you have one bucket of money where, you know, you're doing your investment management and your portfolio management. You got your 401k and you've got, you know, all these stocks or, or exchange traded funds or what have you. 
but then you also are able to take advantage of a rule. Um, and I think it's tax code 7702, I think is what it is. And it has to do with um, modified endowment contracts. And when you overfund a permanent policy, when you pay more than the premium, you are increasing the amount of money that is going into the cash portion of the policy and is accumulating dividends, you're accumulating cash more rapidly because like right now, whole life is paying about 5, 5.75%, maybe 6%, which is a good dividend rate, especially considering that none of that money is subject to loss and it is liquid. So throughout retirement, if you overfund these life insurance policies or you structure them properly, it can be another pool of money that you can draw from as income in retirement. There are living benefits with life insurance and, you know, there are many, many living benefits. But for the purposes of retirement income and wealth accumulation, the ways that you can take advantage of uh, cash growth within permanent policies can help supplement your retirement and can help provide stability to some of the risk that is inherent with your investment portfolio. So, you know, the fact that you're not going to. The fact that you're not going to lose money out of in the cash in your life insurance policy and it's providing a death benefit can help, um, you know, protect you against the fact that some of your investments might be out there, uh, you know, in a, in a situation where you could actually lose some money. Okay, now I got this question to ask you. You stated about this earlier. You said um, you want to teach people, you know, common folks about the way the wealthy invest and strategies that they use. What are yeah. some of the ways that uh, the wealthy um, invest and strategies that they use versus oh, man. common people? Well, I'm going to tell you, and, and again, I, I don't want to be on my soapbox about life insurance, um, but so far as creating generational wealth, life insurance has been around for quite some time. And, um, you know, I work in a primarily disadvantaged communities. And life insurance has not always been available to, to everyone. And mm -hmm. so um, I want people who are, you know, especially disadvantaged when it comes to the amount of time that has been allotted to them to create wealth, I want to use these wealth strategies like using cash value life insurance policies to accumulate wealth and provide stability within their uh, retirement portfolio, how to coordinate your assets, how to reorganize your, your finances in such a way that you maximize the outcome. And that that is what the software that I have had designed and the software that I use with my clients and make available to them, that's what it, it helps to do. I've taken the software that I used as a financial advisor and I've talked to the, the developers developers of those that software and had them create something that allows me to apply exactly what you're talking about, wealth-based strategies to middle-class folks. Um, you know, and each situation is is so different. Um, you know, and, and the how people this, that we how does this software work? Break down this software. What does well, this software do? I'll I'll tell you. There's two there's two primary components to the software. One is, you know, the debt uh, the debt-free life portion of the software, which uh, takes a look at someone's entire debt situation. And I don't know if you've heard of the various ways of paying down debt, whether that being the snowball or the avalanche method, where you pay the highest interest rate or the biggest balance or what have you. So this software looks at those ways of paying down debt and allows you to toggle between the two to determine which one is best for your situation. So it does that for one. Two, it also helps us to structure cash value life insurance policies in such a way that you can use the cash that accumulates within those policies to pay down debt more rapidly, okay? We're doing something that's somewhat unique in the industry. I won't say unique in the industry, but has been reserved for uh, wealthy folks, I would say, in the past in that you know, as you build cash value within these life insurance policies, you can take loans against those amounts as well. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to qualify for those loans and they're very flexible loans. And you can 
you know, what they call bank on yourself, or there's a concept that's known as infinite banking. And so whatever you want to call it, um, there is definitely a way, a means by which that you can free yourself from financial burdens by accumulating life, accumulating cash value within life insurance policies. And, and while doing that also, I want to make sure I toggle this. Your software yeah. essentially uh, takes someone's debt and, mm -hmm. you know, use a functionality to show, hey, which you put in all your debt and tell you which, which debt to pay off first to make you debt free. Did I get that right. correct? And that's correct. And, but what it also does is it takes a look at what you're already doing, because sometimes when people have mortgages, or they have credit card debt or what have you, they might be over, you know, they might pay more than the minimum. Hopefully they're paying more. And so we take a look at all of that, where they might be paying more in their mortgage, where they might be paying more, um, you know, on this bill or that bill, student loans and what have you. And we do an analysis and we say, well, how do we restructure the dollars that are already available in such a way that we do the two things that I was talking about, which is pay down the debt and accumulate cash. So it's a, in, in my, the, the way that I like to um, coin the system is to a uh, debt to wealth program. You kind of want to flip things around in such a way because we're such a consumer driven society that the, the majority of us have a, a negative uh, net worth. Um, you know, everybody looks at their house as an asset, but, and it is, there are ways that, again, using our software that you can free yourself from even your mortgage. Most of our clients are seeing hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt taken away in, you know, seven years or so. Simply by, and it's simply by reorganizing their finances because most people that own a home have the means by which to free themselves of debt simply by reorganizing their finances. Mm. And, and we help them to do that. Okay, so essentially, it's more like a financial planning tool of uh, taking a financial picture and telling you the best approach yep. to get into from point A to point B. Exactly. And people, I, they tell us their goals. They say, hey, you know, this is where I want to be. I want to have a million dollars. I want to have $2 million by 65. And what we're able to do is pressure test our plan within the second part of our um planning software there's a second component to it that allows us to run what's known as a monte carlo scenario mm -hmm. and a monte carlo scenario runs an almost infinite number of possibilities of you know your financial plan it, it it pressure tests it and runs a number of different random outcomes and it will tell you the likelihood of success of your plan so if you say i want to have five million dollars by you know 65 and it looks at your plan and it says well if you follow this plan you will have a 95% chance. The way that we programmed it is that we want to illustrate to people a 95% chance of achieving 100% of their goals. And so we're able to use logic-based planning to help them do that. And that includes, you know, some estate planning um, analysis. It includes life insurance. And it also includes um, investment portion of things. So, yeah, it's, it's an excellent platform. And I'm looking forward to uh, to rolling it out here in its final form, um, actually in 2024 here. So uh, we're looking for testers. So if you're watching the show, uh, we're definitely looking uh, for testers of the final level of the uh, of the platform. Okay. Now, when you're looking at this, um, is it be when this when this is rolled out? Would it just be rolled out to financial advisors, financial planners, mm -hmm. general public, a website? How would this go? No, this is going to go out to the general public. So I'm going to I want to I'm going to roll this out to my clients. Mm -hmm. These people will become my clients. So people who buy life insurance from me will become clients, and they will have access to this platform. And you know, I'm in a situation to where um, you know I'll be donating as a public benefit corp uh, between thirty and fifty percent of the commission that our, my agency gets from the sale of life insurance back to local communities and to focus on financial literacy and education. So, you know, we're paid by, I'm paid by the insurance carriers. I'm not paid by my clients. Mm -hmm. And so when I sell life insurance, when they pay me a commission and they pay my agents commissions, we're, gonna t we're taking those amounts 
and putting them back into the communities that, we're serve, that we serve. And that's part of our commitment as a public benefit court. Now, is a public benefit court, <clears throat> tell us what that is. Since you have one, um, yeah. you know, people, you know, what is the public benefit court? Man, we are, we want a profit. We're not a nonprofit. You know, we are cooperative, cooperatively owned um, and we are, we want to make money. It's just a matter of what we're going to do with that money. We're kind of do-gooders, I guess you would say that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we want to focus on reinvesting in the community and helping people and educating them on how to get out of this, you know, financial debt trap um, that we are, in a lot of ways, born into. If you're a middle-class person, in a lot of ways, you are born into debt. Um, you may be unaware of it, but um, you know, it's very difficult for uh, most folks to get out, out of that trap. And so I've advocated for um, getting rid of predatory payday loans and being an advocate for that and an agent against that. And so, um, you know, rolling out this platform is kind of doing the exact opposite of being a payday lender. I want to help people get out of the debt trap and help them to get into um, a better financial situation and, and be uh, financially free. Okay. Now, a public benefit corp, um, why not just be a regular, let's say, LLC or S corp, C corp? Well, I wanted to the public. Is there any benefits to being a public benefit corp? Um, you know, for us, it's more it, it, more of a statement of our mission than anything else. Um, you know, as a, as a public benefit corp, um, you know, we operate as a as a conglomerate of sorts in that um, it's not just me at, in D squared Financial Group. Yes, I have a life insurance agency, but I also work with estate planning attorneys real estate agents, and other folks who are like-minded. We just have a holistic approach to financial planning and helping our clients. And so uh, the D-squared financial group itself is, is a group of specialized, uh, very diverse um, financial professionals. And so, um, you know, that's kind of who, who we are as, as a public benefit court. Okay. Now, if people want to follow you, get more from you, hear more from you. What do you want to leave the audience yeah. out there um, that's catching yeah. this live or to catch the playback? Um, yeah. What do you want to say to the audience out there today? And also, what do you want to, um, how can people find and get more and get more in contact with you? Yeah, yeah. So just search up D Squared Financial Group. And, um, you know, I've tried to make myself very reachable. Um, just go out there on Google. Hopefully my SEO, my search engine optimization is working. <laughs> uh, but look up D Squared Financial Group uh, or just look me up, uh, Demetrius Raiden Johnson. I think there's another Demetrius Johnson out there, but he's an MMA fighter. And I he looks better than I do, but um, I don't do a lot of fighting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's how people can. Is there anything else that you want to uh, leave yeah. with? Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I just want people to, you know, I do a lot of advocacy in the black community. And mm -hmm. so I talk to a lot of uh, African-American folks and I talk a lot about financial freedom. And mm -hmm. in, in a capitalist society, the only way to truly be free is to be financially free. And so I want people, when they think about life insurance, I want people to get excited about life insurance. And when people declare that their life matters, I want them to put pen to paper when they say that and ensure the thing that they say that matters. And so, you know, I don't want um, folks in the black community to um, discount their lives by underinsuring themselves. Um, I want to help them and help us and those people that, you know, again, were previously maybe not able to buy life insurance, take full advantage. Mm. Okay. Well, Demetri, definitely thank you for stopping by. Um, definitely thank you for stopping by today. Um, definitely was uh, good to have you on. And we definitely got to check back in with you again, okay? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm definitely available. I love to further the conversation. It's been great talking to you. And uh, you have a good one. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, into the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me doing around the globe, this is the Prince of Investing. My name is Prince Dykes. Peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.